Hello and welcome back to our online multiplayer uh, online sessions series. In this episode we'll be carrying on from where we left off last time where we went into the lobby after clicking join matches and we're going to design our lobby interface. Now this will take part over uh, several episodes but uh, in this one we're going to set up the lobby screen level and level and the basics of the UI. So I'm going to first of all create a, uh, a new lobby scene set up in my lobby level. At the moment our lobby is just a black void, uh, we're going to fill it with something. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to go and create a floor so we can actually stand stuff onto it. I'll put a cube in there and we'll make that uh, nice and big. So and that'll do just there. Now obviously we need some lights in here so I can actually see what we're doing. So let's go and grab in a point light, or a directional light sorry, and drag that into our scene. Now it doesn't matter which way, uh, where you place it, but it does matter which way you place, uh, which way you direct it. So in here we're going to design what the lobby is going to look like. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have our character model standing inside our lobby here. So as players join you'll see a new model appear and on this screen the player can choose to ready up or not, change the character they want to use um, and the server can also, the host can also set up the map they want to use, a game mode and so forth. So uh, let's go through and place our various actors. Now for this we are going to be placing uh, third person characters but we will be replacing them later on. We're just using this to see where we should place them and, and organize them. So for this what we're going to do is actually create a whole new lobby character. So at the moment we've got our third person character that comes with our, our game. I'm going to duplicate this and call it my lobby character. And you want a separate lobby character because you don't want anything like cameras or UI or anything like that on it. So you, you want to get rid of all that stuff including all this code here. So let's just get rid of all this code. Like that. Yeah. And I'm going to go onto the viewport here and remove a few things here. So let's remove the camera boom, camera itself, particle system, and the widget there. And I'm going to keep the gun there just, just because. Okay, we hit compile and save on our lobby character. Now I'm going to place these lobby characters into my scene, uh, directing which way I want to go. So I'm going to make them face towards the light. Okay. And I also want to place a camera in the scene so that when the level begins, it knows where to, uh, to like shoot the camera from. So we're going to go over here into place actors and search for our camera actor. Yeah. And we're just going to raise that into position and frame our character here in good shot. I want him to be almost center. So I think that'll do pretty good. Okay, so with this camera, I want to pin its uh, appearance here so I can keep an eye on how the camera is going to be looking. So if I hit the pin button here, no matter what I do now, that will stay there. So next, I want to place more of my characters here. So I'm just going to click on the character here and I'm going to duplicate it across. I hold down the Alt key, my keyboard, and drag in. Do it again. One over here. Trying not to make them look symmetrical, it looks weird, but we'll um, place these guys here and we'll another, another one. Oh, another one. We'll put one more in, so we've got a team of six people, three, 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 whatever it may be. Okay. There are our characters inside a shop. Now I'm purposely leaving the left hand side of it blank because we're going to have our menus there. So that's going to be our options, our ready up button, things like that. So now you've got all your characters in the place. We want to replace them all with a player start. So you're going to select each one, right click and go replace selected actors with. And in here you'll see player start. Click this and it will replace it with this uh, player start here. Now it says bad size. Don't worry about the just yet. We'll fix that in a moment. So select each one of these and replace it with a player start and it will replace it with the exact location and rotation we have already been using okay yeah now they all say bad size that is because they're probably clipping through the floor a little bit so we're going to select all of them floor 
all of them selected and just raise them up a little bit and it'll fix it there you go um so that will now spawn in a char your characters into one of these slots here so next we want to make the camera the one that is being used here so when you go to open level blueprint and on the begin player this we're going to get the player controller and we're going to take to set view target is blend and plug that in there the new view target is going to be the camera so select the camera and then in your lobby in your lobby's level blueprint right click and you'll see create a reference to the camera actor choose this and plug that in to our view target leave it all like that and we're done so when the level loads up it'll take control of this camera and as players join their characters will get inserted into one of these player starts okay so now we're going to go back to our online folder here we've been using and we're going to create two custom things we're going to create a custom lobby game mode and a lobby player con uh, controller go to blueprint class and do new game mode base called a lobby game mode and we want this because we need to tell it to use a different character than the other game modes and also it's where we have lobby specific uh, functions to do things like ready ups and uh, character checks and ca changing characters things like that so we create lobby game mode and we also want to create a player controller for our lobby as well so lobby player i'll just do lobby controller for you lobby controller so now we have to tell our game mode to use this controller we go to lobby game mode and on the right hand side you'll see the settings for the various classes you'll see player controller class and you're going to choose your lobby controller next we have to tell it to use the default pawn class to our lobby character that way it knows what characters are spawning at the player starts if you don't change this you just get the default pawn which is a ball in the air so hit compile and save that next we need to tell our map here to use this game mode specifically so go to the world settings tab if you don't already have this go to window see world settings and on game mode override it says none change that to say the lobby game mode and it will bring forward all those settings that we've just done okay we're going to hit save on this so the next thing we need to do is get it set up to add a widget to the screen for a host and a, and a client now the host and client will have different widgets depending on who they are because the host needs to be able to change the map uh, set the game mode and check for ready checks uh, whereas the player just needs to be able to change their character and ready up their character so let's go and create those two new widgets we're going to create a new user interface widget object and we'll call this one lobby host screen and open this up i'm going to keep it very simple for now we'll do more details in the next episode uh, but for what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just put a border in my canvas here and I'll make it fill up the left hand side similar to how we have it in the main menu so go to the left hand side there and change the offset bottom here to zero now change the size x here to whatever I want whoops yeah and I'll make this uh, black I do so as I said we're going to keep it simple but to be able to determine what one we're looking at I'm going to drag the text into it and I'll put it in the center and type in the name here host compile and save that close this and we're going to duplicate this do the client one so let's change the name of that one to say client screen and we'll go into here and just change the text here to say client instead of host okay so how do you actually get widgets to spawn inside of your game be each player differently so the reason why you can't do things say on the game mode is because only the server has the game mode so it's kind of useless what we want to do though is make it so it spawns it on the player controller that way each player controller can uh, uh, call up this widget and store it locally so we're going to go to lobby controller and go to event graph and in here we're going to create a custom event and this custom event is going to be um uh we'll call it create menus okay 
and this is important we want to change this function here to be replicated only on the cl owning client that way it's only the local player that gets this function called not every every player controller in the game remember the server has access to all the player controllers so it can do everything but the client only has access to their own so you need to be able to determine which one is which so this will handle that for us it'll just call it on the person that owns this owns this current controller so on begin play we're going to call this function create menus yeah okay now we only are in the create menus we need to know whether or not we are a host or a client and we use the switch has authority node to handle that the way this node works is that when the uh, code gets executed it will check to see if it's a server or client if it's a server it will go down the authority node path if it is a client it will be remote so it's a remote client down here so let's go along the top here and do authority first and do create widget and we're going to call this one to do the lobby host screen we want to promote this value here that comes out of this but we don't want to just necessarily just do promote to variable instead we do want to make a new variable over here you could do it that way but it just means you have to change the variable type so here will be we'll call it the lobby widget and we'll change the variable type here to a user widget object reference we'll drag that out and do set and you should be able to plug that into your set lobby widget Make sure it just is a user widget that's all and then we're going to tell it to add to viewport add to viewport and you can plug in the lobby widget there okay and then we have to do the bottom which is the remote client this will be basically the same so we just take this copy that and paste that down here plug it into the remote path and we're going to choose our client screen like so file and save that so now our individual clients and the host will call up their own particular widget and i think we have done this i'm gonna hit save and everything and then i'll copy these files over to my other laptop to test this out so i'm going to cut it now and uh, we'll see you in a second okay so i've got it loaded up on my side laptop now and choose to host a game so on my side laptop now i've got the host joining and it says host on the left hand side and if i click join here you should see the match there it is join the match there and this should connect and it should put me on the screen and say client which it does brilliant so there's our two characters we've got the host and we've got the player displayed here and that's what we're going to do for this episode. In the next episode, we'll start working more on the left-hand menu so you can see and change things and initiate a match. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. I want to show, shout out a big thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in this channel and me. Thank you so, so much. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.